people accused of illegally removing the statue of the 17th century slave trader Edward Colston have been cleared in court of criminal damage. Rianne Graham, Milo Ponsford, Jake Scoos and Sage Willoughby were charged after the monument was pulled down and thrown into Bristol's harbourside during a Black Lives Matter protest in June 2020. Here's what they had to say outside of the courthouse. Well, joining us now is one of the four, Rianne Graham, in front of what is, of course, the empty plinth in Bristol where the statue formerly stood. Good morning to you, Rianne. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Good morning. Thank you. It's very nice to be here. Well, yeah, undoubtedly, because, of course, it could have been very different. I wonder how you're feeling. It's the morning after the day before. What's your reaction still now to the verdict that came through yesterday? It's, it's incredible. I mean, it's very early, it's very cold, but my heart is still very happy that um, a jury spent the time to listen and came to the, the verdict of not guilty. It's incredible. Were you, were you surprised, Rianne? Were you expecting, actually, mm. on the face of it, I think we're going to be found guilty? I think I always had a, a good feeling about it. Um, I personally have never felt like a criminal in this, um, but you have to keep grounded and I just, I, you know, it could have gone either way. So I'm just thankful for the result that we have. It's interesting. I, I expect you've had a look at some of the papers this morning. I mean, for instance, the Daily Express headline, statue vandals cleared, but where will it end? Um, you, you must have had response from some people who say, all right, then, you know, at what point does vandalism cease to become a crime? You know, what was your defence, do you believe, that led to your acquittal? And does this mean that every political statue that someone might have an issue with, they can just topple it the same way that Edward Colston was toppled? I completely understand people's concerns and I really don't think um, this is a green light for everyone to just start pulling down statues. This moment is about this statue in this city at this time. Um, and our, our main defences relied on the fact that, um, well, all of the dissent that um, has gone over the past hundred years, people have been protesting, particularly around the last 30 years, and campaigning to have this statue taken down. Um, and it's not without that... Um, legacy that um, we, without that we could never have a leg to stand on with this so that's very important the context around this particular statue is very important and um, I could tell you the, the sort of the four defenses that my my case personally relied on and that was that the intention was not to damage the statue it was to remove the statue then the the, the damage that um, the statue got was actually um, proportionate in relation to prevention of crime and those crimes are um, indecency, the fact that the statue is an indecent display of an op oppressive, murderous man and is such an offence to so many of the population of Bristol. And it's also the prevention of crime, uh, of misconduct in public office, where so many calls to have this statue taken down have been ignored by the council. Um, yeah, that's interesting, and then we have Rianne, the, the fact that on the plinth itself... Yeah, because, mm. because there was a petition, of course. Though I remember at the time... There was a big debate, wasn't there, about why it had to be uh, physically brought down by a group of protesters when there had been a petition to remove it and, mm. you know, and, and perhaps replace it with something else. What happened with that petition that it, it couldn't do what you eventually did? I mean... We're not just talking about that one petition. There's been petitions over many years. Like I said, there's around a, a good 30 years of quite active um, objection to that statue. But the protest around that statue actually goes back to the 1920s. And I, I really don't think that had, uh, without us pulling it down, that that statue would ever have come down. Your, right. Those legal arguments that you just gave, Rianne, as in, in your defence, seem very clear and you can understand what they're coming from. Mm. And successful. And successful. Uh, was that actually your perspective when you got there? Because that sounds very legally. Was it, were you just passionately involved with a lot of your fellow Bristolians in the desire to take down this monument to somebody who, as you've described, really shouldn't have been there, was a, was a murderer and, and, a, and a slave trader? I think things look, um, you know, a little bit more sanitised when they're put through a legal framework. But genuinely believing at the time, I, I believed that 
we were preventing further harm to the city. And it, you know, it's not necessarily about me believing exactly what crime we were preventing at the time, but we did believe we were preventing crime. We knew that the council had failed. And if I can, I'd really like to just uh, add the, the last two defences that we relied on. Mm. And that's um, one that it says on the statue that um, it's owned by the citizens of Bristol. Therefore, we had some sort of claim over uh, the fate of that statue. And the fourth one is that actually the value of the statue has now increased and therefore... Can you really say that we damaged it? And Tom Wainwright, the barrister, uh, Milo's barrister, was able to say in court that we've increased the cultural and historical value of the statue. But the thing that we weren't allowed to say in court was that actually we had a, an art value value the statue and pre-toppling it's worth about £6,000. Post-toppling, the valuer reckons that auction it would get at least £150,000, if not up to around £300,000. I mean, I think, I think legal students will examine this case they with will. interest for years to come, Rianne, because, uh, as you say, the legal arguments are fascinating yeah. in themselves. But just, just to pick you up on something you said earlier... Really? You do not think, do you, or do you, that any political statue that a group of people have an issue with should be toppled? I mean, how, how does this not send that message out? No, I, I will leave the fate of monuments in other cities to the, the citizens of those cities. But like I said, um, the context of this statue is, is very particular. It's had a lot of protest around it. Um, and it's not without that legacy, we would not have been so justified in what we did. OK. All right. Well, interesting to talk to you, Rianne Graham. Thanks very much indeed. Because, of course, um, Rianne, Milo, Thank Jake and Sage have many supporters, mm. delighted that they were acquitted. As you will probably know, others not so impressed. Yeah, we're joined now by political commentator Calvin Robinson. Calvin, we've been inundated with viewers this morning who disagree with Rian with regards to the fact that this is just going to open the floodgates to any sort of political vandalism, that people want to express their views, they can now go forward, express their views, and they will find a defence that will allow them to be acquitted of any charges put towards them. At the same time... I think it's clear, as, as Rianne pointed out, there have been protests about this statue for, for 100 years. They've tried all sorts of petitions. They've tried to get the council to, to pull it down, to move it, to change the names. And in toppling the statue, suddenly the name Ed Coulson has been taken off schools, it's been taken off entertainment venues, it's been taken off pubs. So they have had the impact that they wanted to have. They have indeed, Ben, but I think I agree with a lot of your viewers on this in that I don't think it sets a very good precedent. It's almost vigilante mindset, isn't it, that you can just tear down a statue if you don't agree with it. What they should have done, and you're right to say that they tried over the years to put protests in place and petitions, what they should have done is ask for a referendum. Um, it's quite easy for uh, Rihanna and other people to say, actually, well, this is our statue, we are citizens of Bristol, so we have a right to tear it down. But how does she know she speaks for the majority? That's the question I'd like to ask, because the majority of people will have a say if, if they own that statue. Like any statue in a public uh, square, we should have a public referendum. People should have a vote and say, do we want to keep it uh, and add some context to it? Do we want to keep it and leave it alone, or do we want to remove it? And if we want to remove a statue, we should do so properly in a civilised manner, not tearing it down, not vandalous. And, you know, just sit there and say, oh, we were preventing future crimes. No, you weren't preventing crimes. You weren't preventing anything. You were rioters. Look at, look at this footage here. They were vandalous. They were thugs. They were tearing down something that they clearly disagreed with and then they shoved it in the river. That is not uh, peacefully removing a statue, is it? It's outrageous. Calvin, and I think this precedent will, will mean that people copy yeah. this around the country. Calvin, um, you might agree, uh, disagree uh, on the evidence. The fact of the matter is they've been acquitted. You know, those legal yeah, arguments, the, fact, a, the presence yeah. of Edward Colston on that plinth as... Uh, uh, it represented in some ways a hate crime that they were preventing. That, that argument has succeeded well, in court. Those four people walk away acquitted. Mm -hmm. They are not criminals. They are not guilty. They are innocent. This is the problem, though, isn't it, Susanna? So, if you look well, at the I court case... I don't think case, it's actually, a problem, Calvin, trying. in a... Le in, you know, we, we are, are... You know, it's, we have a country where it's a, we have a rule of law. It's a really important principle. It, 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 
Well, if you let me finish the sentence, what I was going to say is that the problem here is I don't think they were tried on the crime because they admitted to actually criminal violence. They admitted to tearing down the statue. I think the problem here was that the court case seemed to be more of a case of trying Edward Colston. In fact, a historian was admitted to the to the trial as an expert in Edward Colston rather than they didn't have any experts in, in criminal violence or, or criminal destruction of property. So I, what I think happened here is that the, the political argument was put forward that it wasn't about whether the statue was teared down or whether that was right or wrong. It was about whether the person who was in the statue was right or wrong. He, Edward Colston was on trial. I'm not here to defend Edward Colston. He had a very uh, wicked past. He made his money in evil ways. He did also put his money to good use in you know setting up old houses and charities and schools, that kind of thing. So there's a balance to be addressed, which is why I think context would have been better. But the fact of the matter is that here they thought that he was a bad man, therefore he, it was right to tear down his statue. Whether, they, whether it was legal or not to tear down the statue wasn't actually qualified. And that's why I think it's a problem, mm. Susanna. So it's, it's a really interesting case. Certainly. I mean, lots of you getting in touch. Uh, Calvin, says, thank you so much. I'm appalled that they've got away with this damage. By all means, you have the right to campaign to have it removed, but don't take matters into your own hands. Jim says it's OK just to turn down any statue because they find offence in there being there. There's a whole bunch of people who don't like the statue of Churchill. Mm -hmm. Are we going to stand by and watch that being torn down now, even uh, with, uh, with the, um, the perpetrators not being charged? On the other side, uh, Irene says, it encourages, if it encourages more people to pull down racist statues, then so be it. The Colston Four have paved the way for the youth to right the wrongs of the past. Good on them. And Paulie says, great news, the Colston Four were cleared. Uh, it, it's interesting, you know, listening to Rianne's point that they tried. It's been demonstrated for over 100 years about this statue being there, there has been petitions, there has been protests about it, and they hadn't got anywhere with it. Then all of a sudden, by taking matters into their own hands and toppling it, suddenly Edward Colston's name was taken off so many different monuments within Bristol itself. And the value of the statue has gone up. I mean, I'm not sure anyone would buy it, but... It's been valued, and, uh, and if someone does, they're going to cost them considerably more.